guys welcome back to my channel today i'll be showing you guys my wedding planning timeline that helped me stay on track for my wedding day and hopefully provide you tips and tricks to stay on track for your special day so the first thing you need to do is find some kind of system that will keep you organized whether it be a binder or a shared google sheet to share with your fiance so that you guys can both be organized and in the loop of things then the not so fun part is to set a budget. So this is important. You need to sit down with your fiance or your parents or whoever else that is involved in pitching in for the wedding costs. Next is to draft a guest list so you have an idea of the headcount size that you need when you're looking for venues. And just keep in mind that about 80% of people that you invite will actually show up unless it's a destination wedding. So in my opinion, finding a venue is probably the most important thing on your to-do list because the venue will be the backdrop of your entire wedding and most venues book up a year in advance, if not more. So that's definitely something to tackle off first on your to-do list. Once you find your venue, then you need to set the date and soon after start researching vendors to see if they're available for your wedding day. And believe it or not, photographers book up really fast because I experienced two different photographers that weren't available for my wedding date that I requested about a year in advance. So the first thing I did after getting engaged was purchasing the Knot Wedding Planner binder off Amazon for $18. I think it's nice to have a binder to keep all your contracts throughout the year in one place. However, this binder particularly for myself wasn't really necessary. It does have nice tips and tricks in there with inspiration photos if you have no idea what goes in a wedding. Magazines are also nice for wedding inspiration. However, I ordered two different subscription and I haven't opened a single magazine throughout the entire year. So for me, Pinterest was more convenient because it was online and also it's free. So if you're debating between magazines, um, I don't really think it's a necessity. Going to a wedding expo was pretty fun. Um, for us personally, we had already found all our vendors ahead of time and um, it wasn't really that useful for us, but it was fun. You get to try food tasting and to just go around and talk to people and get freebies and all that stuff. And we did actually find one vendor, which was our cake vendor here at the wedding expo. So around the 10 month time frame was when I proposed to my bridesmaids and that's also when my fiance asked his groomsmen and whoever else that were attendants of the wedding. Then around the same time frame, we also did our engagement photos. You don't really want to postpone the engagement photos too long because you need to have those ready in case you wanted to send out save the dates with your engagement photos on it. One of my favorite pre-wedding events was when I proposed to my bridesmaids. I tricked the girls to come out to a tea party for my birthday celebration so they had no idea that I was going to do my bridesmaid proposals. So it was very nice, very sweet, and we had a great time. I also have the video of me proposing to the girls and also the DIY bridesmaid proposal boxes if you guys are interested in seeing what I put together for the bridesmaid proposal. I also did a little flower girl proposal. I got this off Etsy, a mini puzzle magnet um, for her to put together that just says, will you be my flower girl? Unfortunately, my flower girl was not available that day, but it was a cute gesture in case you guys are interested in finding something to propose to your flower girls or um, ring bearer. Here's a short clip of our engagement photo shoot that we did. Um, we had a great time. It was super cold that day, but definitely check that out if you haven't already. It's also under my down the aisle playlist and I'll also link it below. About eight to nine months prior, this is when I did my wedding dress shopping. Luckily for me, I was able to find the dress in one day of shopping, but it could differ for different people. So definitely start shopping around the nine month time frame. And if you guys haven't already seen my video on wedding dress shopping, be sure to check that out. It's under the down the aisle playlist. And I also plan on putting together another video of my actual dress that I ended up choosing and all the details and why I chose it and also 
post-wedding on how to clean and preserve your wedding dress. If you guys are interested in seeing that, stay tuned for that upcoming video. So around this time, I also made sure that I secured all my major vendors, paid my deposits, and reviewed all the contracts um, to make sure that I'm good for the wedding day. Smaller vendors such as transportation can be done later once you have an idea of your schedule of events for the wedding day. Another favorite part of wedding planning is attending all of these food tasting events. We had so much fun doing this because we love to eat, so that was fun. And you also get to go to private food tasting with your caterer and then start to pick out all your hors d'oeuvres and menu selections for the wedding. So about seven months prior, I created our wedding website. Uh, it's nice to have to give your guests a little information about the two of you and provide other information that will be useful for them for travel, lodging, schedule of events, and also include your registry on there. I also added frequently asked questions. Um, that way, the more information I provide provided online, um, it reduced the amount of phone calls and text messages that people will ask for the same question. Here is a wedding party section. Um, it's just a little mini bios of each of them and about how we all met and what they're looking forward to this year and just a nice little touch to the wedding website. Also, depending on what kind of website you use, some websites provide online RSVP, which is very useful for the last minute people who don't send in their RSVPs right away. And that way you can avoid the whole waiting on snail mail RSVPs. At this time, we also started our wedding registry. Um, we definitely didn't finish it completely, but it was nice to start and check out local events like the crate and barrel that we went to was a private event it was really nice they offered a lot of brochure and then also free snacks and coffee for you to drink while you go around and scan everything so as much fun as this was we ended up choosing a honeymoon fund registry because we like to take adventures when we travel and we thought that was better fitting for us rather than buying things that we already have basically all the essentials at our home together so after i found my wedding dress and then proposed to my bridesmaids next on the list is to go bridesmaids dress shopping um, what we did here was booked an appointment with Nordstrom's wedding suite and they just pulled out all the dresses that I asked them to just to get an idea on what looks good on all the girls across the board. Coming into this appointment, I wasn't trying to make the girls walk out with their dresses right away. I wanted to think it through, um, look at the budget and all that stuff to be considerate for their bridesmaids because I know bridesmaids go through a lot of expenses through the wedding year so definitely something I kept in mind when looking at dresses. After our bridesmaids dress shopping, I went online to do additional research on the best dress for the girls and I found Desi Group. Um, I ordered some swatches off their site. I wanted to do different colors for the girls. I didn't want one color across the board. So I found these three swatches and put them next to each other and they just turned out perfect. So this is what I ended up choosing for the bridesmaids. And we certainly cannot forget about the guys, however, they were so much less stressful than finding dresses for bridesmaids. Um, all we did was go to our local men's warehouse. All the guys came, got their fittings and measurements done, and we ended up renting tuxedos for all of them, including the groom. And of course, what better excuse to get together with your friends and eat Chipotle. So I will end the video here because that was information overload within 9 minutes. No worries, don't get overwhelmed. Stay tuned for the continuation of the final 6 months of wedding planning in my upcoming video later this week. I hope you found this video to be useful and feel free to ask me any questions in the comment box below. Wedding planning was an enjoyable experience for me and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching!